Greetings, Earthlings. Today I'm back with a review of the microphone, which is the spiritual successor to the Sony C800G, which was a $10,000 tube condenser microphone. That microphone being the Sony C100, and if you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you around $1,250, which I am sure sounds shockingly like a good deal after learning the C800 had cost $10,000. I will throw some links down below if you do want to check it out though. For this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen. My gain is set at around 12 o'clock and I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. First, everything comes in this awesome hard shell carrying case. You'll of course get the microphone, a shock mount, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a bit of a foam windscreen, and a tiny bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality of this microphone, I have absolutely zero complaints. It has an all metal body as well as a very firm metal mesh grill with no give to it. On the front you have a very nicely attached polar pattern selection switch to go between Omni, Cardioid, and Figure 8. On the rear of the microphone, you'll find the same style of switch for a 10 dB pad, as well as a high pass filter. On the bottom of the microphone, you will find the XLR port. Also, this microphone does have two capsules in it, one being a full condenser capsule and another being an electric condenser capsule to capture the 20 to 50 kilohertz frequency response. And if you are interested in it, this microphone is made in Japan. Then as far as the specs of this microphone, it has a cardioid, omnidirectional, and bidirectional polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 Hz to 50 kHz, a sensitivity of negative 31, negative 37, or negative 35 dB on the cardioid, omni, and bidirectional polar pattern respectively, a self noise of 19 dB, 24 dB, or 22 dB on those same polar patterns in the same respective order, and a max SPL of 132, 138, or 136 dB on those same polar patterns in that same order. The mic has an impedance of 90 ohms and a phantom power requirement of plus 48 volts. Now I'm on the cardioid polar pattern moving around to 90 degrees. Here's the off axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to the rear of the microphone should be dead here. Continuing around to the second 90 degree area and then ending at the front of the mic. Now I am on the omnidirectional pattern moving around the mic and you should hear very little tonal change as we move around because it should be picking it up. 180 degrees around the mic and we are at the front. And lastly we are on the figure 8 mode moving around to 90 degrees. This should be the deadest area. Continuing around to 180 degrees here's what the rear of the capsule sounds like. Continuing around to the second 90 degree area, another dead null area, and then ending at the front of the microphone. Now let's see how well the microphone does at rejecting plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. And now with the provided foam windscreen, please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to really accentuate the proximity effect and here is how it is sounding. About 3 inches off of the mic with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how it is sounding. About 1 foot away from the microphone, 2 feet away from the microphone, and about 4 feet away from the microphone? Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for all you gaming folk out there, now I am typing on the sad W keys. Here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. There is the microphone right there. And here is how the mic sounds on the cardioid polar pattern in a completely untreated room. Now to see how well the provided shock mount performs, I'll go ahead and tap my desk so we can see how much of that it rejects. And I'll tap the boom arm. 
Now I'm going to tap the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies in the body or the grill. Next test, I want to go ahead and see how the provided foam windscreen affects the tone of the microphone. Currently, I'm a couple inches off of the mic, no foam windscreen on top of it, and I am on the cardioid mode, no high pass filter, and here is how it is sounding. And now I have the provided foam windscreen installed. I don't hear too much happening in my headphones, but it's really going to come back to listening and playback. It isn't as noticeable as a lot of foam windscreens, so it seems as though they did a fairly good job at making a transparent foam windscreen. Now I am back right on top of the microphone so we can get that proximity effect back. Currently I do not have the high pass filter engaged and here is how it is sounding. And now I have engaged the high pass filter on the microphone and here is how it is sounding. You can hear that it does clean up a bit of the low end, but it doesn't sound to be too overly aggressive. There you go, high pass filter test. Now, like always, I'm going to do a quick comparison between the Sony C100 and a bunch of other microphones, enough that I would call it a smorgasbord of other microphones that are available to see how it compares against them. We are starting on the Sony C100. I am on the cardioid polar pattern, no high pass filter engaged, connected to the 2i2 or 18i20, gain at 12 o'clock, and here is how it is sounding. Just because I think it's funny, here I am on the Niwer NW700. This is a $22 to $23 microphone, 6 inches off, gain at the same distance. Check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these in post, and let's jump to the next comparison. Back on the Sony C100, at the same distance, same gain setting, nothing else has changed, and here is how this microphone is sounding again. Now I am on one of the most popular condenser microphones, the Audio-Technica AT2020. This goes for about $100. Same distance, same gain setting, check the lower third, no filters or anything on this mic. And there is how it sounds in comparison. Let's do some more of these things. For the third time, we are back on the C100 so you can hear how this microphone sounds before we jump to another one and hear how it sounds compared to that. Now we are on one of my all-time favorites, the Rode NT1. This goes for about $270. I am 6 inches off, gain still at 12 o'clock, and there you go, that's how it sounds. Let's jump back to the C100 and do more comparisons. Back on the Sony C100, and I have to admit something, I started rereading Harry Potter, ton of fun. But here is how this microphone sounds, let's go to the next one. Now we are jumping up in price quite a lot. This is a $900 FET condenser microphone. This is the Telefunken TF11. Six inches off, gain at the exact same distance. And this is how it sounds in comparison. Let's do a couple more comparisons. That's what they're called. Hey, we're back on the Sony C100 again. Cardioid mode, no high pass filter, gain at 12 o'clock. Let's jump to another microphone and hear how it compares to that. Now I am on another very popular condenser microphone, the Neumann TLM-103. I am 6 inches off, gain at the same spot, 12 o'clock. This goes for around $1,100, and here is how it is sounding. Very nice sounding microphone, but what do you like better, TLM-103 or the C100? More comparison time. We are back on the Sony C100 again. Unfortunately, it's not the C800, because if I had that, I would have ten dollars to $20,000 <laughs> in one microphone. But here is how this sounds. Let's do another comparison. Now I am on the AKG C414 XLS on the cardioid mode, no high pass filter, six inches off, gain at 12 o'clock. This goes for about $1,100. This is a studio workhorse multi-pattern, and I mean multi-pattern microphone. There are tons of them on here, nine, I believe. And this is how it sounds in comparison to the C100. Let's do one or two or three more. I don't know how many more. Let's do more comparisons. And I believe this is the final microphone we're comparing it against. So here is the C100. Get a good feel for it in your ears, and let's jump to the last mic. 
And to wrap up, we are on another extremely famous workhorse voiceover microphone, the Neumann U87 AI on the cardioid mode, no high pass filter, gain at 12 o'clock, six inches off, and this goes for $32 to $3,600. Lots of money, but a very good sounding microphone. And there you go. Those are the mics we're comparing. Let me know in the comments down below which of these microphones did you like the sound of the best. Do you like the C100? Do you like the TF11, the AKG, either of the Neumanns, or do you like the newer, newer NW700? Comments down below. Let's do the music test now. I hope it's not too much to ask for But I'd like my pizza now Bring it fast, no bring it pronto Population me in pizza town Mark my words, world, I will have my pizza And I will have it pronto one of these days And that, <laughs> that wasn't a threat as much as it may have sounded like one But I will have my pizza you will bring me my pizza and it will be pronto. <laughs> it's not a threat, but here are my demands. Okay, as someone who has never used the C800G, if this microphone is close to that mic, I understand exactly why it's popular for rap. Because it is extremely articulate. It is articulate. Gets all that sound. And first up, in terms of pros, it offers a hyper-detailed sound and to be frank, that's probably why you're looking at this microphone and why you would buy it, because you want that hyper-detailed sound. I was also really impressed by the high-pass filter on the microphone. Most high-pass filters are too aggressive. This one worked extremely well at not removing too much of the voice. Well done there. I also really like the, the case that it comes in because it makes me feel like James Bond. That's not really a pro, but also the build quality and how well they thought all of the accessories out is really great. And then as far as cons, I do think the self noise is a touch too high at 19 plus dB. I also found the shock mount to not be the most effective. It's not the worst I've ever heard, but at a $1,250 price point, I would have liked to see a little bit more effective shock mount. And given the hyper detailed sound, I do find that it can be fatiguing over longer listening sessions. And now as far as my overall thoughts and opinions on this microphone, on the electric guitar, I really wasn't a big fan of it, at least not for more aggressive and distorted sounding guitars. I think it captures too much sizzliness to it, and I did not think that was appealing or pleasing to listen to. On darker sounding electric guitars, I do think it can work and it can bring a bit of life into that, but it definitely wouldn't be my first pick still. Then on the acoustic guitar, I absolutely adored this thing. Probably my favorite use case of all of them. It offers such an articulate and lively sound. The low end is not anemic or missing. The mids are clear. Just an all around wonderful sound on the acoustic. Next up for singing, I actually did find myself enjoying it, even though I am partial to more warm and vintage sounding microphones. This is not that. This is detail, 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 articulate, articulate, articulate. It has a bit of a sheen to it because it has so much air going on up there. Not the smoothest, 
But once you start to throw on a bit of processing, a compressor, and stack some vocals, you get some really cool sounds and very, very modern sound to it. If that's something that you're going for, I think it does accomplish that quite well. And lastly, for spoken word, I thought that it was surprisingly good. I am typically not a big fan of very bright microphones with big boosts in the treble or air. This one wasn't terrible. It has a hefty low end, which was surprising to me. The mids were unobtrusive and very clean. And then the top end was open. And I know I sound like a broken record, but this is what this microphone is. It was detailed and articulate and crystal clear. That really is the only way I can describe the upper end of this. And again, I will say, not the smoothest top end. If you're looking for smooth, it doesn't really do that, but it can work really well. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Sony C100? I don't see why not. I would mainly recommend it for people who are recording acoustic instruments or singing voice, I think that's where it really excels and where it really brings something new and interesting to the table. It has a different sound than most microphones that I've heard. It has a sheen to that top end, which is very modern sounding and I know a lot of people are looking for. On the other hand, for spoken word, it really is a toss up. I personally think the TLM-103 is really giving it a run for its money, and it's about 125 or 150 bucks cheaper. It just has a smoother top end, and that is something that I am always looking for in my spoken word microphones. For long-form spoken word content, that top end may become a little bit unappealing, and you may want to look elsewhere. But if you are buying this for studio use, you're buying it for acoustic recording and for singing, and you want to use it for spoken word, you absolutely can get away with that. I found throwing on a de and an LA-2A just wonderful sound. And I believe that is it for this review. I did use this microphone on the Bandrew Says podcast. I linked that in a card. I also used it and put out a cover song. I linked that in a card. And I will put the higher quality audio on podcastage.com if you want to hear that. But with that being said, go ahead and tell me which of the microphones that I compared it against did you like the best. Did you like the C100? Are you a TLM-103 fanboy? Do you like the TF-11 or the NW700. Tell me in the comments down below. And a huge thank you to these amazing folks over here. They are the members of this channel. Without them, I would not be able to continue to do this. If you want to be one of these wonderful, beautiful, amazing, lovely people, you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher. Okay, bye.